likes and loves his own poetry, right? <laughs> yes, for all those of you who are poets and storytellers. A picture. We all have pictures we carry or show. I want to show you a picture which is the story in this poem. Twenty years or so ago, my mother said this. My little sister and I stood with this one old woman when the men and boys left Acoma to look for work in California. California, the echo. The Acoma people had gathered at the plaza to watch them leave and to give them all their love and prayers. A few of them had horses and some had burros, but most of them were on foot. It was a very poor time then. I think it was 1910 or 1911. All the people were having a hard time. It was a sad thing that time. They had to leave Akama to make a living, to look for work, for pay. In all that time since then, I remember a song the men and boys were singing when they left. Karahori niyatsi, karahori niyatsi, karahori niyatsi, karahori niyatsi, karahori niyatsi, karahori niyatsi, scattered, but they remember and think about the reasons why. 
They answer their own questions, and always the truth and love will make them decide. And the poem. Nez wanted to break in. He had confessed. I could have killed. Maybe I did. W, the Sioux, blunted his fingers on the wall. Kit Carson Chapel at Fort Lyons. You know, we stood shivering to some kind of error that afternoon. We could have become warriors again, rounded up the maniacs, made them hush. High up the stained glass blazed fires. W did know it when he spoke soft fire. But love, that's reasonable. We're people, not like them. It was a Fort Lyons VA hospital, and W and Nez were native or indigenous guides, vets of the Vietnam War, which was still taking place in 1974. This world of America has a special mystique that we have been sold. But look north, west, south, east, all around. It is ours to know. And the poem. Looking for Billy, I knew he wasn't anywhere nearby. Like his words, he could be anywhere. He was gone. West, south, east, anywhere. He was the shadow. Memory was his lost trail. West, then south, then east. A swirl of America in his brain, looking for shadow. He could be anywhere. And the last poem. I have always loved America. It is something precious in the memory, in blood and cells, which insists on story, poetry, song, life, life. In the day room, the Oklahoma boy sits sunken into the arms of a wooden and leather couch that has become his body. The structure of his life and the swirl of his mind have become lead. There is beauty in his American face, but the dread implanted by the explosive in Asia denies it. The life he now matters by is pushed away without pity by the janitor's broom, which strikes his shoe. Only the corners of his eyes and the edge of his shoe know the quality of the couch he has become. It is the life he has submerged into, a dream needing a name. He has become the American, vengeful and a wasteland of fortune. For now, the epilogue. That dream shall have a name after all, and it will not be vengeful but wealthy with love and compassion and knowledge, and it will rise in this heart which is our America. Thank you.